Hi, I'm Ben Newland. Uh, I'm a researcher at Cardiff University and our lab's been developing cryogel scaffolds. It's a type of biomaterial that we're making available to other labs around the world in the hope that they can answer new and exciting biological questions and at the same time reduce animal use in their lab. So um, here are some examples of these. These are much larger than normal uh, for the purpose of this video. Okay, but you can see that they're very soft. We can make these as soft as uh, human brain tissue, yet um, they're robust enough to be picked up with a pair of tweezers. This makes them really easy to work with and we use them typically to deliver reagents locally to, to tissue in culture. And this one here, for example, has been loaded with a, a blue food colouring. Okay, so in this really short video, I'd like to just show you, one, how they can be used um, uh, in tissue culture, Two, how our collaborators, Anna Williams at the University of Edinburgh and her team have set up a new model of uh, multiple sclerosis. And lastly, just run through how this, you know, using such a setup in ex vivo slice culture could replace the use of live animals and reduce overall animal use. So if you're a, a researcher um, working with uh, tissue in culture, please feel free to think about ways that this could be used in your lab and, and whether you'd like to have some and what new research avenues this could open up for you. So how can these biomaterials be used in tissue culture? Well, what I've got here are pieces of paper that I've cut out to look uh, basically like coronal sections of a rodent brain. Obviously, these are far, far larger, um, and this is just for demonstration purposes. I'm trying to indicate here roughly the, uh, the size of a uh, adult rat brain, for example. And these are typically cultured on a filter membrane, and these are placed uh, at the air-liquid interface. This means that they have medium um, below them to feed the tissue slice. And what I'm trying to show here is the, uh, the problem that researchers face when they want to do some sort of manipulation of that tissue. So if they want to add a reagent, that would typically be done to the medium below. And as you can see here, you just get a global effect across that tissue. Um, and so uh, this can be problematic uh, if you want to see just a regional effect. So now what I'm demonstrating is um, the, the cryogels, basically, the cryogel biomaterials. I'm picking one up, and this is, is shown, can be picked up with a pair of tweezers. Again, this one's much, much larger than we would typically use uh, um, in slice culture, but it's just so it goes roughly at the right size for the, the, the paper cutouts that I've used. So these can be dipped into reagent, and because they're highly porous, they will soak it up like a sponge. As you'll see now, as we pull this out, it's larger than it was when it went in. It soaked up the uh, food coloring that we're using here, and that can be placed right next to the tissue slice to create a regional effect on the tissue. Okay, So you get this surrounding area where the reagent or the therapeutic or whatever it is that you're using has uh, diffused into the tissue. Now you can leave it longer um, for a deeper effect um, or shorter for, for less tissue penetration and then you can take it off when you're ready. Professor Anna Williams and her team at the University of Edinburgh have been using these cryogel materials for multiple sclerosis research. And the reason being is that uh, the demyelination that's shown here, the damage to the myelin sheath, doesn't occur evenly throughout regions of the brain and the spinal cord. Um, actually, as shown in this, uh, in this scan of, of a human brain, there are regions, as highlighted here, where the damage is greater than in other areas. So how can we recreate that in a dish? Well, as I've shown you the setup already, um, you can see here I'm trying to depict the cryogels here. And these have been loaded or dipped in lysophosphatidylcholine, that's the LPC there, with the idea being that they release that slowly to these regions of tissue that are closest to the cryogel, so only having an effect there. So does this work? Well, we can show here with this, uh, this, this dotted line here, the region close to the cryogel, if the cryogel was placed here, where the myelin, which is shown in green, has basically been lost here. Okay, zooming into this part here, you can see some debris of the myelin, but the majority of the axons are not myelinated. So we've really got this focal area of damage here, which spontaneously remyelinates by day 14, allowing 
the, the research is now to, to investigate the effects of what's happening between the healthy area and the pathological area in testing new therapeutics. So just briefly to show you what do the cryogels look like, here are scanning electron microscope images. We can make them all sorts of shapes and sizes now. And they have a beautiful pore and strut structure. So they have these areas, large open areas that are basically just air, and these struts which connect them. And that's what gives it these fantastic properties of being as soft as brain tissue, yet can be easily manipulated, picked up, moved around, dipped in a dye, etc., etc. Okay, so how can a setup such as this be used to reduce animal use in scientific research? Well, here I want to just draw out the uh, very basic principles of, of ex vivo tissue slice culture. For example, I'm drawing a brain and the spinal cord of a rodent. And this can then be uh, taken and cut like that, for example, and mounted in an upright fashion. Okay, as I'm trying to depict here with my drawings, okay, and the same can be done. A section of the spinal cord can then be taken and mounted as shown by those cut lines there. Okay, these can then be um, sliced up, okay, into sections as shown here for the brain and for the spinal cord. And those can then be grown on the uh, air liquid interface with medium below them. Okay, so... This then would give you typically something like six coronal slices of the brain and anywhere from five to ten uh, slices of spinal cord. So using that uh, and, and, and trying to depict a, a situation where you have a therapeutic, yes, that's meant to be a pill, uh, and you don't know whether it works or not, and you'll need to compare that to an untreated control. You'll need a series of repeats. I've just shown, for example, an N number of six, so six repeats. Perhaps you have an early time point and a later time point. This, as you can see, quickly means you rack up a lot of animals for a very, very simple experiment of finding out if something's likely to work or not. With the ex vivo situation, then, as shown before, we can have uh, our not only our spinal cord sections, but also our brain sections. Let's say we have uh, six sections of, of brain and six sections of uh, spinal cord, that means you can quickly see that we'll have the use of two animals in order to answer the same scientific question where 24 animals were required in vivo. So this is great for um, quick experiments where you really need to find out fundamentally whether it works or not uh, before going into greater detail. And I'd like to thank the NC3Rs for funding this research that we're doing in our lab at the moment. Okay, I hope that gives you an idea of what sort of things can be achieved with these cryogel biomaterials. Um, and yeah, we're always happy to explore new and exciting ideas. Um, we can tailor them for that, for your specific project. Uh, for example, we've made these down to two or 300 micrometers now in size. We can make different shapes, different sizes accurately now and highly reproducible. And we've also been making them with very large pore sizes, for example, for cell delivery for, uh, uh, to, to tissue and culture. So, yeah, please feel free to get in touch. Happy to discuss ideas and come up with new and exciting materials for your group.